the coolest Canadian, Greg Rebel. Apparently, Jerem Jordan has started a thing, Greg. And now we're playing the Canadian national anthem as your walk-up music to the show. But yeah, you, I endorse you, that. No, you've become, I, I, I no problem you've with become that. a legend, man. Well, <laughs> I, I like a small L legend on that one. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, we had a fun fan question, and we certainly want your opinion on this. If you could guarantee one win against either LSU or Utah, not saying the other game is going to be a loss, but if you could just guarantee one win against one of those two teams, who are you going to choose and why? Well, first up, let's say in, in, in the real world, and real life, you can get them both. Oh, right. yes. Right. Yes. 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 So this is not an either-or scenario in the real world, so let's go for two. Okay. Uh, if I had to have just one, uh, I'm taking the Utah game because of, of kind of where it falls and where it fits. Let's say you go to Houston, and, and in week two, you're already 1-0. You've beaten Portland State. You beat LSU on ESPN. Everyone's going nuts. BYU's now 2-0. You're in the next top 25. People are going nuts. And then you follow it up with a seventh straight loss to Utah. Well, major letdown. And everyone goes, well, how big was that win against LSU if you lose the next week? So for that, 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 that's one of the reasons. Because let's say you go to LSU, play really well, and they happen to eke one out. You're playing in almost their backyard. No one would – I mean, if you go and take on a top 10, top 15 LSU team and lose it in Houston but play pretty well, you'll, you'll get credit for that. For sure. But then you build on that, and then you snap the six-game losing streak against Utah the next week. You beat Utah – on your home field, you're two and one. You're still playing well. I think it all. I, I that that's why I go for that. Plus, you know, there, there, there's the psychological part of it. Yeah. You snap a six-game skid. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to deal with it for another year. Of is there some kind of mental hurdle against these guys? So for all those reasons, I would say if you had to pick just the one, I'm going for Utah. But I want two. I want them both. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, let's go. Let's go for two. Yeah. Um. So so let's let's put this uh, scenario out there. Let's say that there is a ten or maybe even like an eleven plus. Um, you know, wins the season, but, but, you know, BYU falls to Utah, you know, how does that scenario um, affect the overall success? And I think I, I said this, uh, uh, you know, on, on the show earlier this week, you know, if we beat, if we lose every single game, even Portland State would beat Utah, I'll be happy. <laughs> no, that was a Brian, joke, but yeah. Brian. That was a joke, man. Okay, it's a joke. But there are some people that feel that way, right? Yeah, yeah me too. Well, if you were at 11 in the regular season, if you're like Nigel Tufnell and this one goes to 11, if you were at 11 <laughs> in the regular season and you're 11 and one, even if it is Utah, that's a heck of a season, and you're probably looking at uh, at, at being in the oh, mix yeah. for the, you know for the CFP at that point. So if you, if you were in an 11 win regular season, regardless of who the losses to, uh, you're going to be in fantastic shape. But I, I, I wouldn't want to think about it that way. Like that would be the one. Um, that that said, a 10, 11 win season would be uh, you know a step up from Kalani's first season and exceptional considering uh, the strength of schedule. Yep. We're looking at September as the understandable critical month for BYU to gain national attention. As it always is, as an independent. Absolutely. Yeah. And get ranked and be relevant because without a conference, that ranking carries added significance, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you feel like BYU has to do in the first five games through the end of September to be in a position where they could potentially finish the season ranked in the top 25 for the first time since 2009? Wait, hold on. Spencer says, what, you said two and three? I said right? three and two. Three and two? I said four and one. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think I'll go two and one in those back to back to back P five games. Okay. Yeah. Which would probably extrapolate to four and one if you can bookend it with Portland State and Utah State. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I would love that. Not, not that it couldn't go the other way, because if you were three and two and then went on a big run and you end up the you know the regular season at ten and two, well then you're probably in the mix for good things as well. If you were to go on a, a huge long run, uh, but I, I would say it, it, those back to back to back games, the LSU Utah Wisconsin trio. If you were to go two and one on those three, as opposed to one and two, let's yeah. say, you really kind of show the national folks that yeah, you, you know, you're the real deal, capable of not just competing with, but beating P5s on on a pretty regular basis in that little three-week run. So yeah, I'd say if you went two and one against those three and bookended with those other games, four and one, uh, you're going to be uh, ranked and, and in the mix for a while. Yep, that's 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 what I say. Not you, that it couldn't happen at three and two, because a lot of teams, again, if you lose those games early, but then go on a big run. You know, the, the, those early losses, uh, especially if they're if they're the good teams, yeah. if you were to lose a couple of P5s, not that they get forgotten, but there's certain credence lent, uh, you know, to the schedule you, you gave yeah. yourself in, in that first month. Well, I think that's that's what, um, you know, people or critics are saying about the team last year, right, as far as their losses. I mean, they, they played them tough. They were competitive and only lost 
by a handful of points. But when you're one and three, it's tough to get back in Absolutely. the mix. Absolutely. Yep. You know, a exactly. couple of plays, we all know how, how close it was from one and three to three and one. But at one and three, you have a lot of room to make up. And you, you can go on a nice run, but you may not get to where you want to be uh, by the end of the season. Yeah, so, so the, 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 the run, it should be set up for success, right, towards the end of the season. But when you look at Boise State and you look at Mississippi State after, you know, September, um, you know, where do those fall in the mix as, as far as, you know, overcoming the, the September battle, so to speak? Yeah, now we're getting into a point where the CFP rankings are almost about to be released for the first time. And if you've given yourself an opportunity in SEC territory in mid to late October, you know, what a great reminder uh, you know, to the powers that be of how you're playing. Uh, it's a great opportunity to go into SEC country in October. Give yourself a great late season chance right there. No one should overlook uh, what it would mean to win a game in the SEC at that late in the season. Uh, you know, Dan Mullen uh, got an extension, and, uh, and and actually after the loss to BYU, I think they lost the week after. They actually came up with a win or two that kind of raised some eyebrows in the last month or two of the uh, last month of the season last year. So, um, Mississippi State. At their place, that time of year, in the land of the cowbells, is by no means a gimme. So if you get that win, you've really earned it. And let's, you know, and of course, Boise's right before that, right? Yeah. So uh, you've given yourself kind of these phases of the season that, that, that give legitimate challenges that would certainly uh, gain credit and respect if you get those wins. Unique schedule for BYU this year because they play Hawaii and they have an exception of a 13th game. ESPN's mm -hmm. Football Power Index has BYU favored in 10 games. What would a 10-win regular season really mean for BYU football? Because it's been a little while since they've gotten to the double-figure mark mm -hmm. in the win category. It means another step uh, in uh, of progress in, in the Kalani Satake era. Nine wins in the first season shouldn't be, again, sniffed at. That's, that's pretty darn good to come in with, with as, as new a staff as it was getting accustomed to this, uh, you know, to, to the players they were coaching for the first time, yeah. coordinators coordinating at that level for the first time. Nine wins, that's a heck of a job, considering how close they were to 10 or 11. We talked about the narrow margins of, of defeat last year. To go from nine to take it up a notch to 10 in year number two would be just, uh, you know, right along the path. And I know Kalani and the fan base so want to see this team, uh, you know, go on. But, uh, uh, you know, 10 would be great. It's, it's better than nine. And with the yeah. schedule they've got and the games they've scheduled – I, 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 again, I, th I think it's full credit for the schedule. I mean, so, so with that being said, I mean, what are proper expectations? Since we're, you know, you know, coach was on, got us, got us fired up, and talked about expectations amongst the the players and the coaches in the locker rooms. What about us for as as fans? So we're not either, you know, jumping off of off the bridge or you know, getting too high on you know certain wins. It's okay to it's okay to expect and want great things, and and, and fan bases and supporters should always expect the best for their programs. And as to what's realistic and not realistic, so much of that depends on on the teams you're playing, the injuries you uh, you incur, all these kinds of things that that have a significant impact in the course of a season. But why not expect a double digit win season? You got nine last year. You know what's what's one more? Uh, you've got six Mountain West Conference teams in there. Uh, you've got an, an FCS team. Uh, you've got an in-state rival on your field. Uh, there are enough reasons to believe you, you, you've been competitive with Boise. Yep. You beat Mississippi State last year. You can take a look at this thing, break it down, and say, why not expect 10? Uh, it wouldn't be unreasonable. I know the guys on the team. I know the guys on the team believe they're capable of that. They all think they're going to be a great team this season, and, uh, and, and, and they should. The talent's there. It, it, there are a lot of good players on this football team. And uh, I, as much as people – uh, anticipate you know, year two of Ty Detmer and now Tanner Mangum. And, and I, this defense has me very, very pumped up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not, not that it has to carry the team because the offense will be good, but I think it's an exceptional collection of defensive players at BYU right now, Just especially at the linebacking when core. It's yeah. defensively that way. Okay, yeah. great. Got, not a few, got a few seconds left. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would like to turn some time over to you before you go to tell us cool things from Canada. And there are so many cool things. <laughs> there are so many cool things. Uh, but uh, here's one. Uh, Canada uh, has a province with a half-hour time zone. Whoa. <laughs> That's amazing. Wha Where? <laughs> the province of Newfoundland <laughs> is three and a half hours ahead of the mountain time zone. So right now, it's uh, 2.15 in, <laughs> in Newfoundland. It is a half-hour time zone province, and you don't get that in every country. Yeah. So there's, wow. there's another cool thing about That's Canada. That's amazing. Yeah. Is, yeah. 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 Great, great stuff, man. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Always a pleasure. <laughs> All right, till, ne till next time. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait, man. Oh, by the way, i got to get this in. Uh, in this week's Cougar Quiz on BYUCougars.com, Brian Logan did get in the quiz. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that, man. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, I just oh, and I, hey, I, I improved from last time we talked. 
Uh, I went from 43% to 60%. <laughs> for you. Again, another step up. Another step. Take the that's, next step. Progression. That's, that's, that's all that matters. All right, yeah. good job, Progression. Progression show. Thanks, Greg. Yep.